So SmackDown, we had a Charlotte Flair segment that led to Shotzi Blackheart coming out to challenge her. And they had a 12-minute match, and it was all right. There were a few spots that were... I don't know what was going on. But uh, ended up getting beaten, and uh, we had um, Sasha Banks out at ringside, and Sasha was cheering on uh, Shotzi. So after the match, Shotzi gets really mad at Sasha, and she turns on her, beats her up, attacks her, and turns heel. Yeah. Um, they need baby faces on that uh, SmackDown well. women's roster. But I guess that Shotzi isn't one of them. Um, I thought that she was going to be. So, I mean, it looks like Naomi's the one they're really pushing. So They're doing a hell of a job pushing her. Well, that's a different story. They, I think they think that... You know, being beaten down by the authority is is how they push baby faces. And, this is uh, it. This is their whole thing. They, they, I mean, they have doing, no been... clue how to get a baby face over. They only know how to get <laughs> heels over, and so they hope that by getting heels over on baby faces, you will feel sympathy for the baby face. That's the as mentality. opposed to actually doing anything to get the baby face over as a well, hero they're, they're, or a winner or a well, not as a winner, but yeah, they're they're trying to get them over as someone who you feel has been wronged, and then you get behind them because they constantly are being wronged but uh i don't know i mean i'm not i'm not sure that naomi is the person anyway i mean for for that role but even if she was you know the way they're doing it it's probably you know especially like with a modern fan you know that stuff i don't really think that stuff it you know the thing is is that it worked for for brian danielson and that's been there, like, oh, this is how it is how you do it, and they've copied it, and and they haven't figured out that, like, what everyone else figured out that that was a very unique case, and it doesn't work for everyone, and it doesn't work for hardly for hardly anyone actually, and that's the situation. We had a segment with uh, Adam Pierce where he announced that as a result of what happened last week, he was not only suspending Brock Lesnar, but finding him $1 million, <laughs> at which point Paul was interviewed about this, and Kayla wants to know what, what he thinks Brock would say about this. So Heyman cuts his huge promo about what Brock would do, and then he realizes that uh, maybe he said too much. So they're still teasing. Whose side is he on? Yeah, so they're they're so both Adam Pierce and Sonya Deville are like now heel authority figures, which is exactly what we need. And you know, after I guess that's the same thing too. It's like it's the playbook. You know what I mean? It's the playbook. Drew McIntyre beat uh, Mustafa Ali two minutes. It was good while it lasted, but it was two minutes. And then afterwards, Ali cut this promo and he says, "The reason you people hate me." is because my name is Mustafa Ali, and they all boo. Usual heel promo, it's the fans' fault, you fans, the whole nine yards. Yeah, you know, um, it's funny because him in wanting to be a pro wrestler, his entire mentality was to not be a heel because... He wanted to show that, um, you know, Muslims are not heels and they can be baby faces. And here he is. Apparently, nobody he, told the company. Well, I mean, he was a baby face for years um, and going nowhere as a baby face. So he's went, turned heel and he's going nowhere as a heel. And, you know, and he is a, a he is a very, very talented guy. He's exceptionally talented. But, um, you know, I mean, they're not behind him. I mean, they know he's good. They know he can talk. They know he can wrestle, but he's not a guy they're going to push. And, and you know, honestly, when he was, you know, he's not very big, and McIntyre is very big, and uh, the size difference was immense in this match. You know, but, you know, you know, they're both really talented. I mean, the whole match was all about, you know, kind of just Drew – doing his stuff, and also winning with the Kimura, not the Claymore kick. So they're changing him up a little bit, which is probably a good thing at this stage of the game. We had the knighting ceremony of Kofi Kingston, and uh, the Usos interrupted, which set up a main event for later on tonight. He has now uh, he's now been knighted. Sir, Sir Kofi. Sir Kofi and King Woods. Yes. Yes, so they're sort of... 
They're not quite doing the British accent like Zelina, Zelina Vega was doing, but kind of still trying to do. It's like it's very clear that Xavier Woods' inspiration is King Booker, so he's kind of doing that. Not quite, but kind of, kind of. And um, I guess it's something new and different. You know, the New Day's been around forever, and it's kind of s silliness, though. I don't really, you know, it's not like it's turning a heel or anything, just kind of silly. We had a trigger street fight match. Happy Corbin and Madcap Moss defeated Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Basically an excuse to throw pumpkins. There were pumpkins all over the place. There were gimmicks outside. I mean, they were taking bumps all over the place, although Nakamura wasn't really taking a lot of bumps. And finally, it ended up with uh, Nakamura's going for the Kinshasa. Moss sneaks up, puts a pumpkin on his head. And then Nakamura and Corbin are fighting. Boogs hits the... Uh, actually, he goes up top, and two masked guys attack Boogs. And so Moss pins Boogs, and the masked guys end up being Umberto Creo and Angel Garza. So it looks like it is uh, Nakamura and Boogs versus Carrillo and Garza for a while yeah. here. And I presume Corbin and Nakamura, they they did that finish last week and led to nothing. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd think that they're going to do, not, you know, it might be like a three, well, it won't be a three-way, but, um, but yeah, it looks like they'll probably do something with Nakamura and Corbin, too. Um, yeah, Carrillo and Garza are real talented guys, so it's like, it's, it's good to get them in a mix. Well, you know, it's a mid-card mix, but it's better than being... You know, doing nothing like they were doing on Raw. We had Shayna Baszler and Naomi, and they come down to the ring, and there's no referee. So out comes Sonya Deville, and she says the referee that's supposed to be in this match was injured last week. <laughs> okay, so this makes this, it gonna be this, totally this, incompetent. This is this is the, that's the most ridiculous thing in the world. But I mean, it's I mean, obviously it's to set up this, but uh, yeah, like they, they like like they haven't even figured out matches until an hour before the show, but they have but they assign referees ten days early. Yes. So she says there's no referee, so I'm going to do it. And, of course, there's a ref shirt that perfectly fits her. And she gets in the ring. And uh, to their credit, uh, this was a pure heel referee, no bullshit. Naomi had a cover. She absolutely refused to count. And then Shayna made a cover, and she did a fast count, and that was it. And then Naomi screams at her afterwards and uh, gets choked out by Shayna Baszler. So, Yeah. If this is this, this feud is this is the stupidest feud in the world, because well, it, it, it's it's building it's building to the big Naomi Sonya Deville match whenever they get to it. The storyline started with Naomi wanting a it's match right. with Sonya. No, no, no. She want she started. Well, with first her she just wanted, wanted a match. She just wanted a match. Then she Sonya wanted a match with Sonya. Then, then Sonya says, "I'm not a wrestler." Then Sonya signs her to a match with herself, but she won't wrestle. So I don't know what the hell's going on. So we're building to a big match with Sonya, where Sonya's going to have to wrestle, and I, I don't know if with that lead, if that leads to Sonya becoming a wrestler again. Um, you know, because down the road. That was probably where they were going. She wasn't going to be an authority figure forever. It was just a way to, you know, entertain that stipulation that she has to retire. That you know they, you know, they that they booked themselves into when uh, she was going to take time off, and uh, when she didn't want to get her hair cut, which was the original stipulation, where she was going to get her head shaved, and then you know because of the stalker thing, the lawyers didn't want her going into court bald. So they had to st stop the uh, stipulation that they had advertised. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Because she was going to get her head shaved bald, and they had to stop the stipulation that they'd already advertised. I know, so but if you if you have a case, if someone was stalking you, I mean, what does it matter if you have a hair or not? That's what her lawyers told. I don't know. I'm not like uh, I'm not her attorney who told her don't shave your head. So I don't know, um, especially because. Yes, if she was the accused, perhaps, but she was not the accused. She was not on trial. She was the one being stalked by a crazy man. Um, so I, I don't have a good answer, but she was told that shaving her head at that point in time was probably not a good thing. So 
they worked with her, you know. They said, well, you know, and they worked with her by doing a retirement stipulation that they all knew that they would never live up to because she wasn't retiring. And, uh, yeah. So now we got to figure out a way to get her back after this authority thing uh, runs its course. Main event was New Day versus the Usos, and two very good tag teams had a very good match, and the finish, uh, Woods rolled up Jimmy Uso for the pin. So, in fact, the New Day back in the tag team title picture versus the Usos. Yeah. Sloppy Oklahoma roll, um, a blind tag in when uh, was Jim, did, um, Jimmy had uh, Kofi pinned. But um, and then Woods jumped in and did the Oklahoma side roll pin thing. Yeah, so yeah, good match. Um, sets up that program. So very much was, a SmackDown that was just there. Oh yeah, very. You know, I mean, it didn't suck or anything, but it was uh, very much uneventful. I mean, the most eventful thing is just Charlotte Flair and Shotzi Blackheart. Uh, you know, as far as something different everything else was just like the street fight was the you know the the the, the thing that they're going to do on halloween because they got to do you know the halloween pumpkin stuff and the thanksgiving food fight stuff it's just their tradition and you know usos and new days you know it's been done but uh you know they have good chemistry it's a good match and uh you know that was a natural program that you knew they were going to get to sooner than later and and They got to it right away. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.